Hello, all you big, beautiful brains. Today, we're going to talk about Wilhelm Wundt. Now, Wilhelm Wundt has a really special name. He's called the father of psychology. And it sounds like this really big title, but he got that name because he did something that was so simple and yet completely revolutionary. So let me set the stage for you. Prior to the mid 1800s, no one had ever studied what we now call psychology in a scientific way. There were philosophers who tried to understand the way we think the way that we do, or medical doctors who tried to cure neurological problems, but no one had actually specifically studied the processes of the human brain or why it makes us behave the way that we do. This all changed when Wilhelm Wundt came along. Wundt studied to become a medical doctor and earned his degree in the medical field in 1856. And you're gonna be saying, well, why medicine? Why didn't he just get a psychology degree? Well, it's because psychology wasn't a thing yet. It didn't exist. Medicine was about the closest that he could get. After getting his degree, Wundt began publishing lectures that he gave, and he even published a textbook about the human body which was really focused on the brain and your senses. So, what did one do that made him this hugely influential figure in psychology? Well, in 1879, one created the first ever laboratory to study psychology scientifically. Here's why that's important. Science is all about testing predictions. For psychologists, the predictions that we make are usually about behaviors or attitudes. Having a specific setting, such as a laboratory, gives psychologists the opportunity to eliminate outside conditions that could impact the behavior or attitude that they're trying to measure. For instance, um, right now you're sitting on your phone watching this video. And really, you could be anywhere. Uh, if I wanted to measure things like how much you like this video, like and subscribe. And you could be impacted by all those things. So say your little sister keeps coming in while you're watching the video and pestering you. Or you're getting rude texts from your boss, right? You're going to rate your enjoyment of this video a lot lower than if you're in an environment where something that you like is going on. Say your favorite song is playing in the background. In a laboratory setting, you can eliminate both good things like hearing your favorite song and bad things like getting yelled at. In a lab, you can be in a neutral setting where we could get a more accurate reflection about how you truly feel about what you're watching which you love, like and subscribe, ring the bell, all those fun YouTube things. One started conducting early psychological research by doing experiments using the scientific method. Approaching the study of psychology this way was groundbreaking and scholars started coming from all over the world. And, and he set up this whole institute that became the Institute for Experimental Psychology. Most of the major names that you'll hear from the days of early psychology came directly from Wundt's lab and worked with him, collaborated with him on projects. So people like Charles Spearman, who was this really influential statistician, or Walter Dill Scott, who was one of the very first organizational psychologists and big name James Cattell, the first ever psychology professor here in the US. And it's certainly due to Wilhelm Wundt and his simple yet revolutionary idea of the psychology laboratory 
that psychology became the influential field that it is today. So, if you'd like to know about Wundt, make sure you watch our video about the theory he created, structuralism. I'll link it in the description down below. And until next time, see y'all later. Bye. Moon, there it is. <laughs>